Today, I am very excited to come here and talk to you about one of the biggest questions I get in my emails and in my messaging, and that is, what is the law of attraction? And I hear about other laws, what are they? I want to go in detail, one by one, through each of the seven natural laws of creation, as taught to me by Bob Proctor, to him from Earl Nightingale, and to Earl Nightingale from Napoleon Hill. To start off with, there is one law of all laws, and that is that everything just is. Energy just is. And when we understand that how we interpret things from our own personal experiences, beliefs, habits, and our own journey in the past, that creates the ideas that we have about how things should go or could go, um, good or bad or otherwise. So when we know that everything just is, then we can come at these seven natural laws I'm gonna to talk to you about from a neutral place. And when we come from a neutral place, we can decide, are we going to go to the positive polarity or the negative polarity of it? The first thing I really want to dig into right off the top is the law of attraction. There's a book over my shoulder right here, open to um, one of my favorite chapters, and that book is The Secret. The movie The Secret as well brought so many people the awareness in their lives of the law of attraction. The book that was um, The Secret was derived from is The Science of Getting Rich. The law of attraction is not a parent law. There is a law over and above that drives the law of attraction. The parent law is the law of vibration. So this is the biggest one I'm going to spend the most time on. So let's do that right here, right now. And I want to talk to you about that. The law of vibration is the parent law because vibration decrees that everything moves, nothing rests, anything ever created from the smallest atomic particle to the largest sky, skyscraper is in a constant state of energetic motion. When things motion are in motion, they are in a frequency. The frequency is the speed at which the molecules are moving. Okay, so when we are dialing into a frequency on our radio, it is the vibrational frequency of that radio station signal traveling through the air. You turn the dial on your radio, your receiver, to that and it attracts that frequency and you are tapped into that music that you dialed into. Because all things have a state of vibration, then emotions are a vibration. When we say we're happy or we're sad, we are actually labeling the vibration that our body is in. We don't say, Bob says this um, often in his trainings, if you've ever seen, seen one, we don't ever say, I'm consciously aware of the vibration I'm in. We say, I am sad or I am happy, I am worried, I am excited, I am fearful, I am hopeful. And it is the name we put to the vibration we're in. $10 million has a vibrational frequency. Sick, broken, homeless has a vibrational frequency. When we tap into the vibration of the thing we want, we are tapping into that vibration. If you think of a happy moment in your life, maybe a baby giggling, maybe a baby kitten if you're into cats, and you can't help but smile. I'm smiling just talking about it because it, we feel happy. We feel happy emotions. If we think about any number of things in our past that has not gone the way we wanted to, maybe the loss of a loved one, the loss of a career, whatever it is, we feel that heaviness. Maybe our fists clench and we maybe get sweaty, we feel sad, our face frowns, we physically get involved in the emotion that we are feeling. Our bodies are a reflection of our feelings. So whatever state your body's in, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling upset, you are getting involved in a low vibration or a low frequency idea. Tap into a good frequency idea 
and you will be happy. You will smile. You will attract you more good things in your day. You will see things in a different light because you are focusing on the good. And when you focus on the thing you want, the thing you're moving towards and you're excited about it and you're feeling what it feels like once you get there and how your lives will change, you attract to you the things that will get you in that direction. Now, is it a magnet thing and you thought about something really happy and something happy happened? That does turn out sometimes. Sometimes you're thinking of a friend you haven't talked to a long time and boom, there they are on the phone. It happens. Also, we are looking for the good in the world. We are looking for the opportunities. We are saying yes to the opportunity instead of being doubtful, fearful, and worried that if I take this job promotion, if I jump in both feet on this, what will people say about me? What will people think about me? And then we don't do it. So we are creating the atmosphere in our lives of not being in motion or being in motion. How do you know what vibration you are in most of the day? Look at your results. What life are you living? Are you living the life of your dreams? Then you are probably vibrating on the positive side towards the abundance. The law of perpetual transmutation. This is the creative process. Transmutation means all energy is always present in one form or another. So when we think about it very simplistically for me to draw that picture for you, water. Okay, water falls from the sky. It was a gas, it fell from the sky, it became water. We froze it, we put it in the freezer, maybe it was on a pond. It froze, it is now a solid. It defrosts, it goes to a liquid. We boil it, it becomes steam. The steam becomes vapor, becomes ether, becomes the clouds, it rains and it comes back again. Those molecules are always there. They're in a constant cycle. Same with a tree. A tree grows from the energy of the ground into a big beautiful tree. Eventually it dies and it comes into the ground and it becomes energy again and nourishes the next tree to come up from it. Energy is always around us. Perpetual transmutation of energy. Energy always is. Our thoughts are energy, therefore, any idea or image that is held in the mind and properly nourished, nourished must move into its physical counterpart because the emotions are expressed through the body. The body moves into action, which produces the results. So tying together with that law of vibration and attraction that I was just talking to you about. The law of rhythm. The law of rhythm is a good one to know about everything has an up and down, a back and forth. Music has up beats and down beats. The ocean ebbs and flows with the, with the crests of the moon. Life ebbs and flows as well. So yes, we are born, we have an amazing life, and then we move on and our energy transmutes into a different form of energy. But also in our lives in between there, the things we do along our journey, we have ups and downs. In our business, we have times when our business is just booming and times where Maybe the phone isn't ringing as much as it used to, or you're not getting all the emails you used to, but then you will crest back up again and you'll be up running again. When we understand everything ebbs and flows, when that downbeat comes, when that slow time comes, you can count on that there will be an upturn and things will be good again. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow or next month, nobody knows, but it will come. So when you are riding the wave, enjoy it, enjoy the abundance, keep that flow going as long as you can. And when you notice things slowing down, what I do is I actually talk to that downturn. I go, oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you, cannot wait for you to leave. But in that meantime, I reset. I relook at what I'm doing. Take a look at processes I'm doing that maybe I could do a little bit better in the future. What did I do in the past that really worked that I want to keep? And so we can ride that ebb and flow. And when the dip comes, it's not, oh darn it, yeah, see, this isn't going to work. I might as well go and work at the gas station on the corner. No, it is the flow of life that ebbs and flows the law of rhythm. Okay. So the next time your business isn't doing so well, just go, oh, there you are, and plan your next attack up the hill, okay? I promise you that ride up the hill is coming again, and you will just keep rising higher and higher, and you will get there. The law of relativity. This is one of our higher faculties that we can tap into. It is our perception. All things are as we perceive them. 
So in the beginning, when I first got on here with you guys, I was talking about energy is, all things just are. Everything is neutral until you think about it, until we put our perception to it, okay? So this to some, some things is a lot. To other things, this isn't very much, okay? In terms of the 40 story building going on across the street from where I live, this is not very much. But to paper, if I was talking about stacks of paper, that's 50 sheets of paper. That might be a lot if you only need one. It's all perception, it's all relative. We can change our perception anytime we want. As humans on the planet, we have the ability to choose. We can choose to remain neutral because everything just is. We can choose to look at the good side or the bad side. We can pick our perception of it. All things are relative. Okay. So when you're in a disagreement with somebody, when you're in an argument with somebody over something and you're just not seeing their way of it, just go neutral. Okay. It's your perception versus their perception. That's all it is. That takes us to one of my other favorite laws, the law of polarity. Everything has an opposite. If something is negative, it can be positive. If something is good, it can be bad, okay? Wet and dry, in and out, up and down. There wouldn't be an inside of this office if there wasn't outside walls to this building. And so all things have that opposite side to them. So in terms of what I was just talking about when we're in a discussion with somebody and it's not going so well, their perception to them, their thoughts on the thing are correct to them. Your ideas and thoughts of the thing are correct to you. And something interesting that I have learned along my journey is that when everybody is thinking about something being in one way or another, it does not necessarily make it right. There is a collective um, paradigm that on an idea on one thing. Like, for example, growing up, money is hard to get. Money does not grow on trees. We have to work hard for every penny. That is a collective idea, a collective thought. But to the people that are using these laws in the right way, that are engaging their higher faculties in the right way, Getting money is easy. It's a person's perspective that money is hard, that I'm always gonna be broke. It is that person's perspective that that was simple. I'm gonna go make my second million and it's all possible. It is just about perception and how we look at it. And if we begin to look at how, oh my gosh, yes, I can buy that house. I can pay cash for it. I can drive that car of my dreams. Other people are driving it. Why can't I? Now your perception has changed. Now you are feeling like you can go get it. Now you're excited about it. Now you've attracted the law of attraction, the law of vibration. You're now vibrating on that frequency because now your perception is going, wow, I can have that. Why not? If they have it, I can have it. Then we start activating all and all of these laws are talking about all tied together when we begin to use them properly in the right direction. So the law of polarity. The next time you're in a discussion with somebody and you guys don't see eye to eye, just remember that what they're telling you is their perception to whatever that thing is you're talking about. Yours is your perception. The law of cause and effect. Um, Ralph Waldo Emerson calls it the law of law. He's the one that coined it that. This law degrees that whatever you send into the universe comes back, action, reaction, equal and opposite. What goes around comes around. Careful what you wish for. Whatever you put out there, you get. So when you are thinking about debt, when you're thinking about the bills to pay, when you're worried about losing your job, when you're worried about your car being repossessed, when you're worried about not having money for rent, there is some great universal energy out there in the secret, they call it the genie, that says, as you wish, O oh Master, and what you wish for, you receive. What you put out comes back with precision. We call it the boomerang effect sometimes, right? You throw it out there. Eventually, someday, somewhere, somehow, it will come back on you. The 
law of gender, the law of gestation, all things take time. We like to live in this instant life. You don't like what's on the TV, you change the channel. You don't like what you're reading, you flick the you just flick your phone and you just scroll by all of this information. Our life is changing so fast, so, so fast. And we have to know that not all things are instantaneous. Food takes time to grow. If you plant carrots, it takes a while for you to get to eat carrots. It takes time. Babies in mommy's tummy takes time. Your dreams, your goals, they take time. How long will they take? It could be a couple of weeks, could be a couple of months, could be 10 years, but if you don't go after it and you keep going after it, it will never happen. Everything has a gestation period. You can speed it up, you can activate it quicker by living within these laws in the positive polarity version of focusing on what you want and where you're going and at least 51% of the time every day you are thinking about what you want and what you're creating. You are not engaging in negative conversations. You are stepping away from the news. I always have a challenge and I'll throw it out to you right now. Take the next seven days as a hiatus from watching the news, reading the news, talking about the news. Step away from the news. I challenge you that. Don't read posts on Facebook unless they are positive and uplifting. Do not do it. The only way you will not get the goal that you're visualizing every morning and every night is to quit. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. If tomorrow you decide to get up and not do your business anymore, you have to start all over again somewhere else. Just keep moving forward. Your grass is green. Your side of the fence is abundant. Okay, switch your polarity. Switch how you're looking at it and you will have a very green, a very beautiful, a very abundant tomorrow. I promise you that. Any questions at all about anything I've talked about here today, send me a message below here. You can email me. My email is simple. It's Connie Ann at ConnieAnn.com. I love hearing from you guys and all of your comments. So I'm 100% here for you. Whatever you need from me, please reach out. Thank you so much for your time. I hope I've been able to clarify all of these for you. And I wish you nothing but abundance beauty and success for all the rest of your days. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye for now.